the five steps to get into Thailand, condo reforms for foreigners and lab-grown coffee. That's all coming up on Good Morning Thailand on The Tiger. Hello and welcome to Good Morning Thailand. I'm Jay, this is Tim, and we're back with another episode. And uh, I think you have to start with a bit of an apology. That's right. I do have to start with a bit of an apology for anyone <laughs> who did catch our live episode mishap yesterday. Well, it wasn't meant to be live, but... It wasn't, yes. But something happened. A wrong button was pressed, and unfortunately, when we were warming up... Um, the video went live and you could, some people got to see amazing facial expressions and some inappropriate language. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, well, I have to say that my conduct was perfect. perfect. Yeah. So I uh, apologize for any uh, rude behavior and or off screen images slash sounds that people heard. Um, yes, Mr. Potty Mouth over here um, <laughs> let fly a few times. So. Yes, it was a frustrating morning. Apologize for that. Anyways, we shall move on. We'll live and be better. Um, here we go. We've got a lot of topics today, Tim. Um, would you like to start off with the topics or would you like to first uh, admire the beautiful <laughs> coffee we've been drinking today from Coffee Culture? Thank you, coffeeculture.asia. That's right. In these beautiful mugs, you can type in the code TIGER for a 10% discount for your favorite flavor of coffee, whether it be Arabica, Robusta, organic, green tea, coffeeculture.asia. We've got some very exciting news too coming up uh, regarding what we would call outside broadcasts where we're not only taking this program, we're actually taking the entire YouTube channel mm -hmm. to uh, two locations, extremely yes. prominent locations, which will be an opportunity for you to come and say hello uh, maybe throw things at Jay or remind him about his bad language. Uh, so that's an uh, announcement coming up very soon. Yes. Uh, but I was going to start by talking about the flooding. Okay. We, l before we start before we do about that flooding, though, a quick shout out to Shaneo Traveller. Thank you, Shaneo Traveller, for being a Tiger member and supporting us and supporting the channel. Sh is it Shane O Traveller? I thought it was Shane O Traveller, but... I've heard you refer to him as Shaneo Traveller. <laughs> uh, Either way. sure he'll tell us. Thank you. So the flooding, now we thought all the flooding woes were, were gone. Yeah. That's so there's what I been thought. two tropical storms that have come through during October. One sort of started at the end of September and it was called uh, Dianmu. Dianmu. And then a couple of weeks later there was a tropical storm called Kompasu, which sort of they come from the east across the south china sea and now i'm using my hands yeah. across vietnam and then they sort of float across the northeast and north of thailand now what's happened is that the the runoff from all those storms and the fact that the government had to let some of the water out of its dams to compensate uh, for the fact that the dams have been overflowing uh, there is still quite a lot of flooding in these areas i'll just go through the areas very quickly with my boulderized Thai accent, Chayapum, Nakon Ratchasima, Buriram, Sisaket, Nakon Patom. So some 14,000 families have been affected up there. And then a bit further sort of down, we've got Maha Sarakam, we've got Supamburi, Singburi, Angtong, Ayutthaya and Patom Thani. Now those areas are just directly uh, north of Bangkok. So in that case, there's been some 67,000 families affected. So the, uh, the flooding has been quite a problem. And even though it happened almost uh, three or four weeks away or back in some cases, it's still causing problems. So I thought we'd just mention that we are thinking of you and hope that uh, we can get the flooding sorted out ASAP. It's a problem every year. They it have is. these same floodings. It is, pretty much. There seems to be no... Um permanent solution to the problem. Um, every year they're alerted, they're warned that this is going to happen and that we're going to, you know, fix the problem, not fix the problem, but at least be able to deal with it in a better way. Unfortunately, as of right now and to date, 
there has been no proper solution to this problem. Because the rain will keep coming. There's no doubt about that. That's right. All right. Uh, let's move on to another topic for today, which is regarding condominiums and a little change to lure foreigners into the country to purchase and invest in real estate. Now, this uh, story was in the Bangkok Post, and it, I, I read it, and I was a bit surprised by some of the lines in it, uh, some of the quotes, one of them from the vice chairman of the Board of Trade of Thailand. And they're talking about the, the condo situation in Thailand. There's, of course, they're talking it up, saying, oh, things are going to be fine, and people are going to be rushing back to the country. Uh, some of their predictions in the story are just ludicrous. We'll get to those in a moment. But the vice chairman of the Board of Trade of Thailand made this comment. Just have a think about this. Um, Thai people should not worry that allowing foreign property ownership was treasonous. Treasonous. Just wow. have a think about that. Okay. Because Thai people can buy homes in many overseas countries and those nations do not regard selling to foreigners as treason. Now, I was shocked to think that any Thai people would actually think that selling property to people overseas was treasonous. Yeah. So I'm very surprised by those comments. I think he, I, he might be referring to property sales in a large scale. So, for example, if big Chinese investors came into Thailand and bought buildings, it, I don't, but it doesn't make sense when we're talking about specific foreigners just coming to buy properties in Thailand. So this just, I, I'm not going to get into the whole property ownership issue because it's a very big topic yeah, that yeah. we've covered uh, in other videos many times, but I mean, you, you can't sell 100% of a property to a foreign person yes. unless they've made significant investments into the country of, you know, a, a million plus dollars in most, in most cases. So with a condo, they can only sell 49% of the rooms in the condo to foreigners. Mm -hmm. That's how they get around that ownership act. And when it comes to um, a freehold of a, a landed property, you can only own 49% uh, of a Thai company that then buys the property or you lease it. So, I mean, there's ways that you can own property in Thailand, but you can't, as a foreigner, fully own a property. So I'm not right. Thailand is a very difficult country to own, really own property, yeah. like 100% in your legal entity. So this is going, I just found the word treasonous, a strange thing for a person from the Board of Trade to be using those terms. Yeah, I think he should have been more clear in what he was trying to say. I, I don't think he means what he meant to say. He also mentioned that skilled labour is going to be a problem in the medium to short term. Skilled labour seems to be a problem around this region where the borders have stopped a lot of the migrant labour coming in back into the country. Mm -hmm. When the pandemic started, people back to their homes and now they're finding it difficult to get back into the country. So the skilled labour is going to be a problem for a lot of sectors, food processing being one which we've mentioned before but for the, the uh, real estate market. And the, the target group that these companies are looking at for foreign investment and getting foreigners back, the target group are long-term residents, uh, which will comprise of rich global citizens, I'm not one of those, remote working professionals in Thailand, that's the nomad, the digital nomads, wealthy pensioners and highly skilled professionals the government. Are you ready for this? Yes. I think they've had the TAT prediction department uh, helping them with this one. They're aiming to attract <clears throat> one million of those particular categories. Wow. One million. Uh, okay, so if they get one million of those categories buying properties in Thailand, you're going to see a boom. It's Real not... estate boom incoming in Thailand. Uh, and they're saying per year. Wow. One million people per year. I mean, that, that's not even optimism. I don't know what word to use. Yeah. So anyway, that's the latest on the, the condo and the, the, the way that the condo woes, I'm calling it, and the way that some of the people in the real estate property market are looking at uh, pushing up the, the condo story. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, after that, let's take a quick break. Uh, once we return from the break, we'll, oh, we'll yes. be talking about the five steps to get into Thailand travel bubbles, and more on Lisa coming to Phuket for New Year's celebration. So get your 
Oh, people, <laughs> we're still talking about that. We're still talking. But there's always something <laughs> popping up about that. So you need to get a pen and paper for the next segment. Sharpen your pencils, everybody. We'll be back right after this. And welcome back to Good Morning Thailand. I'm Jade, this is Tim. It's now time to talk about the five steps you need to take while getting back in Thailand as a tourist once the country reopens. Better known as Tim and Potty Mouth Jay. <laughs> That's right. What so, did your mother do when you uh, swore? Did you have punishments? I wouldn't dare swear. Hmm. I, I, th I felt like I was a well-behaved kid. In my they family, instilled the fear of God in me. In my family, my mother was the potty mouth. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. We've got some graphics for you this time, and here they are. Just give me so these are the steps that people will need to take if they want to come into Thailand. So step by step. That's right. We couldn't be more clear right. step, in amongst all the confusion. Yep. Let's start. Step one, documents, documents, documents. Prepare your documents. Documents such as your passport, your Thai visa, if required, if you're not getting one on arrival, vaccination certificate um, required for the entry for sandbox programs and the test and go scheme, as well as insurance with a minimum um, coverage of $50,000, now reduced from $100,000, and a paid AQ or SHA plus hotel reservation, which has been confirmed, including your RT-PCR test. Okay, for step two, and this is the big one, you'll need to register at this website. And this is the one where you apply for your Thailand pass. So it's tp.consular.go.th. So that is where you apply for the Thailand pass, which replaces the old certificate of entry. entry. And you'll need to do that at least seven days before you travel. Then fill in your details, including the immigration forms, upload the required documents as described in Jay's step one. Then you wait for the pre-approval of your vaccination certificate, and then you obtain the Thailand Pass QR code. Right, and then step three, get a COVID-19 RT-PCR test 72 hours before departure, and please make sure it's negative, because if it's positive, that's not good. Now, step four in our five-step uh, process to re-enter Thailand, uh, you'll need to have your Thailand Pass QR code and COVID-19 PCR test result checked by officials. This is when you sort of ar 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 arrive at the arrive. airport. Yep. Uh, you'll need to pass through disease control and immigration checkpoints, sort of seeing people with PPP outfits spraying stuff on yeah. you. <laughs> uh, undergo COVID-19 RT-PCR test at the airport or the hotel, or the designated accommodation, and they'll tell you at the airport. In case of entry into the sandbox programs, or the test and go scheme. And they're the ones where you've got to have the tests when you arrive. That's right, so make sure you know which scheme you belong to. Oh, they'll tell you, don't you worry about that. Right, and the final step would be undergo quarantine at your AQ hotel, in case you belong to the AQ category, proceed to your SHA Plus hotel in case you're entering the Sandbox program, or proceed to your AQ and SHA Plus hotel in case you're at the test and go scheme. <laughs> okay, so it all sounds a little bit complicated. Know your schemes. But uh, we've got a graphic uh, in the area under this video. It'll take you straight to that particular graphic from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, yeah, I mean, the steps are there, they're all printed out for you so there's more information about that at the tiger.com as well and we're doing our best to try and keep you up to date with all these uh, little details which will make it easier for you to come back to the country it sounds quite cumbersome but really in reality it's not that complicated yeah. but there will be people out there there will be people out there be assured, be assured who will say i'm not coming back until i can get a stamp on my visa on That's arrival right. and Better then go goes, to vietnam yeah, and then go, go to straight Cambodia. to go straight to a bar that's right so for those people i'm sorry it's just not going to be that easy for you at the moment right all right talking about traveling and entering let's talk about travel bubbles now tim the kun suthi phong phuen phi 
the president of the Thai Travel Agents Association. What was his name again? Kun Suthiphong Phuen Pipop. Okay, that's right. Um, who is, once again, the tri- tri- president of the Thai Travels Agents Association, or the TTAA. They love names with T, don't they? Well, T for well, Thailand. It Thailand. Makes sense, yes. Sorry. Uh, said the November 1 reopening scheme without quarantine and area restrictions for 46 countries will also help Thais. Now, we keep talking about tourists coming into Thailand, re-entry into Thailand, here are the five steps, but we keep forgetting that Thai people like to travel as well. Of course. And if there are travel bubbles and once the countries reopen, Thai people will be able to travel and re-enter without quarantine. So that gives a boom for Thai people and a chance for them to travel as well. And expats as well. I mean, That's last correct. weekend I was sitting down working out uh, how I could go for a trip outside the country and come back maybe in the next couple of weeks. Yep. I haven't told you about that yet. Oh. But. Right. Tour operators are also excited to sell packages to expats and Thai people living in Thailand to go abroad, to go on these travel excursions, leisure holidays, work holidays, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the the president has come out uh, to say that, you know, we need to create travel bubbles to make it easy because it doesn't make sense that Thailand is opened, but the places that these people are traveling to, you know, they'd have to do quarantine there. And if they're moving from there, then they'd have to do another quarantine. And that's just going to create a lot of problems for people. So he's urging countries to come together and create a travel bubble so that people from Thailand can go to the depending, for example, Japan, for example. Uh, and once they arrive in Japan, they don't have to do a quarantine. And people coming from Japan don't have to do a quarantine in Thailand. And therefore, it's beneficial for both nationalities. So yeah, quarantine-free travel bubbles are the the big ticket. But I, I think they've been talking about travel bubbles with 50 different countries yes. in the past 18 months. I don't think any of them actually happened. Yeah. So more talk about travel bubbles. That's right. Now the president, Tim, has also come out and said that they've been uh, They've held talks with about six to seven embassies per week of countries such as Japan, India, the Maldives, Sri Lanka, about travel regulations and about basically regulating these, um, you know, travel bubbles within these countries so that people can travel freely. I think the only winners in all this are the coffee shops where people are having these discussions because we haven't seen any travel bubbles emerge over the past year. Well, Tim, talking about coffee, coffee, sorry, ah. coffee, we, we're going to take a quick break, but once we come back from the break, we're this going to be talking about lab-grown coffee. Mm. So mm. Controversial. Is that the future? Uh, we'll be back right after this. And welcome back. This is Jay. I'm joined here with Tim. You're watching Good Morning Thailand, and it's now time to talk about lab-grown coffee. Tim, if well, you've noticed... Yes, go on. Thailand loves its coffee. It certainly does. Now, if you can find a coffee shop pretty much every 50 meters, there are more coffee shops than 7-Elevens, and that's saying something because we have a lot of 7-Elevens in Thailand. How many do we have? How many 7-Elevens? Yeah. 16,342. I think it's 12,000 something, but very good guess. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah, the interesting thing is that 20 years ago, when I first came to Thailand, yep. uh, you couldn't really get a good coffee anywhere. It, was a, it wasn't a thing in Thailand. Mm -hmm. But you move forward two decades and it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Yes. And you're right. It's either a coffee shop or a, a coffee stand. Yep. <laughs> As you said uh, at the meeting before the, the show, uh, if, if you leave school, you've got nothing else to do. You op open a coffee stand. Pretty much. But yeah, you. And what's the favorite coffee drink in Thailand? You can tell. You know, favorite drink. The favorite coffee latte. What do you mean? No, they, they love the iced coffee. Oh yes, iced coffee. Yeah. And it's like really strong with a lot of sugar in it. Yeah. For anyone who's uh, lived here, um, if you're just you know traveling to work, you'll often see people carry, uh, you know, in a plastic cup, their iced coffee filled full of ice. Um, and, and yes, if unless you tell the vendor that, hey, please don't put sugar in my coffee, they will put lots of sugar in your coffee. Oh, it's really sugary. And it's yeah. uh, in a plastic cup with a plastic lid in a plastic bag with a plastic straw. That's right. So it's doing incalculable environmental damage 
but it's hugely popular. Very popular, yes. But you can also go to coffee shops and have a latte and a Americano and a espresso and all the other blends you love. And a lot of this coffee is grown in Thailand. Mm -hmm. But of course, to grow coffee, you need lots of land and you need labor and you need sunshine and you need chemicals and you need all the things. The right temperature. And it's got to be picked and then it's got to be uh, dried, then it's got to be roasted and all, all these processes. Now, uh, the, the Finnish, from the Finnish Technical Research Institute, have developed a fake coffee, if you like. I'm trying to think of another word for it. But the idea is they actually grow it in the lab. Mm -hmm. And it's not hydroponics. It's actually yes. they're growing the, the cells, the, the cell structure of coffee. So it's not ground from beans. It's instead grown from a cluster of coffee plant cells under closely controlled temperature, uh, light and oxygen conditions in a bioreactor. So we sort of think about coffee and you know, there's always the shots of the the drone through the misty hills of yeah. Chiang Mai. There's a little bit of smoke in the air, it's fog. And uh, you know, the coffee beans are sort of uh, growing gently, yeah. organically. Well, this is the complete opposite of that. But they're saying it will solve a lot of problems if they can make it work. Um, it, it's a, prog a problematic product in, any, in many ways because it does use up a lot of land, especially yeah. rainforest land, and especially in places like South America, where it's very popular, mm -hmm. and one of the major coffee growers being Brazil. Yes. So how did it taste? Uh, this is the question, and the answer is here. Um, they are doing testing of the taste of this lab-grown coffee, and they say it tastes, that they're allowed to taste and spit, but they're not allowed to swallow it at the moment. So they haven't sort of done the full testing whether it's I mean, imagine it's safe. You can... What? You're not allowed to swallow the coffee? Well, not yet. This is lab tests. Okay, why is this news then? <laughs> because they're testing it. They're, this is oh, the okay. future of coffee. The future of coffee. Maybe. Compared to regular coffee, they say, the cellular coffee is less bitter, which may be due to a slightly lower caffeine content and has a bit more fruitiness. But why? Why would anyone drink this? But the point being that maybe you just won't know in the future. There'll be a bag of coffee and uh, you won't know if it's lab grown or not. I mean, they're starting to do lab grown meat, mm -hmm. which of course gets rid of the slaughtering of live animals. And I think a lot of people would think, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I mean, the huge. Not a lot of people, but some people, yes. There's, there's a lot of meat consumed, and I mean, the unpleasant backstory to that is that there's usually an animal involved getting their throats cut. Uh, but this lab grown meat, for example, is now legal in Singapore. So you can go to the supermarket and buy lab grown meat. And there's obviously a future in these lab grown products because there's going to be a shortage of land and there's going to be uh, impact from the change in the climate. Right. Well, I tell you what, Tim, nothing beats a good roast of coffee, and you can find your roast of coffee at coffeeculture.asia. Nice segue, Jay, as I get out the taster. That's right. The you test, we, you, test yeah. tasters. And if you don't know what coffee you like, you can actually buy their tasting kit where you can taste uh, different blends of coffee and then basically figure out what you like and get a 10% discount at checkout with using the code TIGER. And can I say that this coffee was grown in the misty hills. Misty hills. Of, beaut of uh, there we are, of some beautiful Thai location. Yeah, with Chiang real Mai, Chiang Rai, all over Thailand. With handsome and pretty migrant workers <laughs> toiling away, picking the beans one by one. One by one, right, coffeeculture.asia. All right, uh, let's move on to the last topic, which is Lisa to Phuket. Now, we're not talking about Lisa Cherley or Bocha Lisa. We're talking about, now, they were talking about the event being held on Saracen Bridge. We spoke about this on yesterday's episode. We showed a picture of Saracen Bridge, which is the bridge that connects um, 
basically Phuket to the mainland. Uh, yeah, the mainland. And um, the event was going to be held there. We were talking about how is this possible? Where are the people going to stand? Now, one of the officials of the Hotels Association, I believe, um, has come out and said that the event will n not actually take place at Saracen Bridge. Uh, so they have come uh, to their senses a little bit and said that because the venue is small, a larger place that can accommodate at least 20,000 people will be chosen instead. They have not confirmed what place yet, so stay tuned for that important information, and you can keep up to date um, so at thetiger.com. Eight weeks to go, and yes. they don't have a location. Yes. They definitely don't have Lisa at the moment, oh. and they maybe have Andrea Bocelli. <laughs> yes. Maybe. This has been confirmed. T-A-T. Apparently it's been confirmed, so if he doesn't turn up, T-A-T. Right. Anyways, we hope he turns up. Um, that's it. That's all the topics for today. Anything else to add? No. Uh, we certainly have some interesting comments in Tiger Bites, yes, though. So um, click on that when it comes up later today. <laughs> some very interesting comments from yesterday's programs. All right. All our programs. All our programs. All right. That's it for today, then. Can I say yes. that on the other side of this, this backdrop, <laughs> you may be surprised that isn't real. Uh, we've got our Thai... YouTube uh, channel. YouTube channel. Yes. Who do their stuff. So a lot of what we do, we do in Thai language as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you, if you are Thai and you want to hear the news and have a few giggles uh, with Bai Toy and uh, learn about celebrity news and different cultural things, the Thai Tiger do uh, their YouTube stuff as well. It's sort of new. It's in the early stages. But, yes. um, yeah, Tiger is growing in all sorts of different directions. Yeah, support our Tiger Thai YouTube channel. And they don't swear when they are doing their programs. Yes, so I've been told. All right, uh, that's it. That's all we have for today. We hope you enjoyed today's show. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below or on Instagram, Facebook, or the Tiger Talk Forum on our website. Uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Shy, behind the buttons. And thank you, viewers, for watching the show. We'll see you tomorrow.